The rain pelted against the windshield as Samantha Ray white knuckled the steering wheel, her heart pounding in time with the windshield wipers. She shouldn't be out on a night like this, especially on the winding back roads of upstate New York. But the phone call had left her no choice. Her mother was dead. The mother she hadn't seen or spoken to in over a decade. The mother whose coldness and cruelty had driven Samantha to flee home at 18 without a backward glance. Now that same mother had apparently left Samantha everything. The sprawling estate, the multi-million dollar fortune, all of it. A bitter laugh escaped Samantha's throat, tasting of old wounds and fresh disbelief. Was this Henrietta Ray's idea of a final twist of the knife? A last remonstration from beyond the grave. Lightning forked across the night sky, illuminating the dark silhouettes of trees lining the narrow road. Shadowy branches seemed to reach for the car like grasping fingers. Samantha shook her head, trying to dislodge the eerie sensation prickling up her spine. It was exhaustion, nothing more. Exhaustion, and the grim legacy of this place that had haunted her dreams for years. Gravel crunched under the tires as she pulled up the long drive of Ravenswood Manor. The Gothic Revival Mansion loomed out of the darkness, its stone turrets and arched windows draped in a shroud of ivy and mist. Every childhood nightmare, every painful memory, seemed to perch like carrion crows along its crenellated rooftop, waiting. Watching. Desolation settled over Samantha as she stared up at the bleak edifice under the pelting rain. She'd escaped this place once. She'd made a life for herself, forged in drive and independence, far from her mother's machinations and cold ambition. And now here she was again, drawn back into the spider's web. She reached to turn the key, ready to drive away and leave Ravenswood and its ghosts in the rearview mirror. Leave the memories, the money, all of it. But before she could start the ignition, a figure emerged from the shadows of the portico. Tall and broad-shouldered, features obscured by the angle of an umbrella. For a moment, her heart seized. Then the figure lowered the umbrella, and recognition clicked into place. Vincent Haverfold, her mother's lawyer and closest confidant. What was he doing here at this hour? Waiting for her? Samantha steeled her shoulders and opened the car door, the rain instantly drenching her hair and coat. She'd faced down boardrooms of powerful men, brokered deals that would make seasoned CEOs weep. She could handle Vincent Haverford. Miss Ray, the older man greeted, his deep voice betraying no surprise at her sudden appearance. I'm so terribly sorry for your loss. Skip the platitudes, Vincent, Samantha snapped, slamming the car door with more force than necessary. Why did you summon me here in the middle of the night? A mournful sigh gusted from the lawyer's lips as he gestured to the looming manor, a strange mix of emotions flickering across his patrician features. Your mother's will was very specific. You're to stay at Ravenswood and get acquainted with your new family until the will is read. My new family? Samantha crossed her arms against a chill that had nothing to do with the rain. What are you talking about? Vincent stepped closer, his steel-gray eyes holding hers with unnerving intensity. When he spoke, his voice was low and intent, almost lost beneath the howl of the wind. Samantha, there are things you don't know. Secrets long buried. And now that Henrietta is gone, those secrets will out. He glanced over his shoulder at the manor's gaping entrance, along with all the vipers hiding in the nest. Dread coiled in Samantha's stomach as she followed his gaze. This house held only misery and dark memories for her. She wanted nothing to do with the family that had surely inherited her mother's twisted nature. Tell them they're welcome to it, she bit out, turning on her heel to march back to the car. I don't want anything to do with this place or its secrets. Bury them in probate for all I care. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Vincent's words froze her in place. Slowly, she turned back to face him, rain streaming down her cheeks. Your mother's will names you as the primary beneficiary and executor. But it also stipulates that if you refuse the inheritance, he took a breath, as if stealing himself. Everything goes to your stepbrother, Rowan Blackthorne. Samantha's heart seized in her chest. Rowan, dot in. The name conjured a flood of memories, stolen glances, forbidden touches, 
whispered promises in the dead of night. The boy she'd loved with the reckless abandon of youth. The boy whose betrayal had shattered her heart and sent her fleeing into the night. The boy who was now a man. A man who stood to inherit a fortune if she walked away. Vincent was watching her carefully, rain dripping from the rim of his umbrella, eyes gleaming like a cat in the darkness. Waiting for her response. Samantha curled her fingers into fists, nails biting into her palms. She'd underestimated her mother's cruelty even in death, forcing her to return to this nightmarish house to face the ghosts and demons of her past, using the only weapon that could compel Samantha to obey, her own stubborn pride. Well played, mother, she whispered, turning her face to the weeping heavens. Well played indeed. Drawing a shuddering breath, Samantha met Vincent's gaze with steel in her spine. Ravenswood and its secrets could swallow her whole, but she'd be damned if she let Rowan win. Not again. Take me inside, she said, voice hard as flint. If my loving family is waiting, let's not keep them in suspense any longer. Vincent inclined his head, something unsettlingly like respect kindling in his eyes. Respect, or perhaps anticipation. Then he turned and strode toward the manor's gaping entrance, Samantha falling into step behind him. Together they ascended the rain-slick steps and crossed the threshold into the serpent's den, the massive oak door slamming shut behind them with the ominous finality of a coffin lid. The great hall of Ravenswood Manor was exactly as Samantha remembered it, all dark wood paneling, antique tapestries, and oppressive silence. The kind of silence that pressed down on the lungs, and made the heart labor against a crush of unspoken things. Her childhood home, the sight of countless chilly Thanksgivings and terse Christmas dinners, each one more performative than the last. A pretty facade covering a family rotten to the core. Her heels clicked on the parquet floor, echoing through the cavernous space like gunshots. Vincent walked ahead, leading her toward the grand staircase, his shoulders taut beneath his tailored suit jacket. Samantha fought the urge to turn and bolt back into the rain. At the foot of the stairs, Vincent paused, his hand resting on the ornate banister. Your mother's study, he said, something unreadable flickering in his eyes. She insisted you be brought there upon arrival. Samantha's laugh was brittle, devoid of humor. Of course she did. Henrietta Ray never could resist staging a scene. She swept past him, the silk of her black dress whispering against the stairs as she climbed. She'd worn black as a matter of course, a nod to propriety. But the color felt appropriate. She was, after all, walking into a snake pit. Might as well dress for her own funeral. At the landing, Samantha turned right, her feet carrying her down the familiar hallway on muscle memory alone. How many times had she been summoned to her mother's study as a child? To be dressed down over a less-than-perfect report card? or abraded for some imagined slight to a visiting dignitary? The study had been Henrietta's seat of power, her inner sanctum. And now, it seemed, her final command post, even from beyond the grave. Samantha reached the heavy oak door, the brass handle cold against her palm. She half expected to find her mother sitting behind the massive mahogany desk, lips pursed in that perpetual moo of disapproval. Stealing herself, she turned the handle and stepped inside. But it wasn't Henrietta waiting for her on the other side. It was him. Hello, Samantha? That voice. Those eyes. Rowan Blackthorne rose from the leather Chesterfield sofa, his tall frame unfolding with the lethal grace of a jungle cat. He'd aged like fine scotch, all burnt umber and smoky danger, his jet-black hair swept back from a face that belonged on old marble statues. Devastating. Rowan. His name escaped her lips on a breathless rush, more curse than greeting. I'd say it's a pleasure, but we both know that's not the case. Something flared in the depths of his onyx eyes, there and gone too quickly to read. He inclined his head, hands sliding into the pockets of his charcoal trousers. I can see time hasn't tempered your sharp tongue. I expect nothing less. Samantha crossed to the bar cart in the corner, dangerously aware of him tracking her every movement. She needed a drink. Something to fortify her against the onslaught of memories, the tug of old heartstrings. 
She poured two fingers of Glenfiddich, the crystal decanter trembling faintly in her grip. What are you doing here, Rowan? She cradled the glass in her palm but didn't raise it to her lips, unwilling to let him see her weakness, even now. The same thing you are, I imagine. His tone was silky smooth, betraying no hint of discord. Paying my respects to our dearly departed Henrietta. Our tongue. As if they were family. As if the same blood ran in their veins, the same rot. They both knew that wasn't the case. Not by half. Samantha tossed back the scotch, welcoming the fiery burn down her throat. She'd need that fire if she was going to make it through this night. Through this twisted reunion, she set the glass down on the cart with a decisive clink. Cut the crap. I know about the will. I know what my mother was trying to do by summoning me here. Rowan moved around the sofa with predatory slowness, his hand trailing along the tufted leather back. Do you? Ah, uh, my. Presumptuous of you, Samantha. You always did have a habit of assuming you knew everything. White hot anger lanced through her chest, bright and cleansing. Good. Anger was good. It would keep her from drowning in the past, from succumbing to the dark undertow of his presence. She stepped forward, meeting him in the center of the Persian rug, close enough to catch the scent of his cologne, the phantom heat of his body. I know you're waiting in the wings to claim your prize if I walk away. The dutiful son, there to console my mother, even as she lay dying. Something dangerous flashed across his sculpted features, a hairline fracture in the smooth, disinterested veneer. Careful, Samantha, he murmured, his voice a low rasp that pebbled her skin with goosebumps. There's a great deal you don't know. Things even you, with all your certainty, couldn't begin to fathom. She tilted her chin, meeting his gaze head on, refusing to be cowed. Then enlighten me, dear brother. What exactly did I miss during my decade of self-imposed exile? He leaned forward, close enough that she could see the striations of silver in his obsidian irises, the faint scar above his left brow. A heartbeat passed, then two, the silence stretching taut between them. When he spoke, his breath ghosted across her cheek, raising goose flesh in its wake. What you missed, Samantha, was a hostile takeover. Ice water trickled down her spine. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Rowan straightened, his mouth curling in a humorless smile. It means, dear sister, that things are not as they appear. And the only way you'll get the answers you seek. He stepped back, adjusting his cufflinks, once more the inscrutable aristocrat. But his eyes never left hers, burning with a dark intensity that seared her to the marrow. Is by staying right here, in this house. And playing the game our mother set in motion. Our mother's game. A mirthless laugh fell from her lips. Why do I get the feeling you know exactly what that game entails? His smile sharpened, showing the barest hint of teeth. Become like you? I never left. I stayed by her side, right until the bitter end. Samantha recoiled as if slapped. The implication hung in the air between them, acrid as smoke. That she had abandoned her mother. That Henrietta had replaced her with the son she'd always wanted. The son who would do anything to secure his place at the top of the Ravenswood food chain. Even marry his own stepsister once upon a time. The study door opened before she could respond, Vincent appearing on the threshold, his face a mask of practiced neutrality. But Samantha saw the way his gaze darted between her and Rowan, as if trying to gauge the tension crackling in the room. What is it, Vincent? Rowan's voice was cool, commanding. The older man cleared his throat. Forgive the intrusion, but the other members of the family have arrived. They're assembled in the drawing room. Samantha's brow furrowed. The other members? Who else is here? Rowan turned to her, his smile a resort blade in the dimness. Why, the other potential heirs, of course. Your stepfather, Charles. And your delightful stepsister, Delilah. The names hit Samantha like a punch to the solar plexus. Charles, her mother's second husband, the man who had swept into their lives on a tide of empty charm and avarice. And Delilah, his daughter, a girl who had made it her mission to torment Samantha at every turn, all poison sweet smiles and vicious barbs. The last people on earth she wanted to see. The last people she would trust with a dollar, 
let alone her mother's vast fortune. What are they doing here? Samantha asked through numb lips. The same thing we are, Rowan replied, brushing an invisible piece of lint from his lapel. Answering Henrietta's summons. Gathering to hear the reading of the will. His eyes glittered like chips of obsidian in the low light. All one big happy family. Samantha's fingernails bit into her palms as realization slotted into place. The game. The hostile takeover. All of them under one roof, a nest of vipers poised to strike at the scent of blood in the water. And at the center of it all, her mother's last bid for control from beyond the grave. She thought of Rowan's words, their dark portent. The secrets he claimed she couldn't begin to fathom. The answers that would only come by playing her mother's twisted game. Slowly, Samantha lifted her gaze to meet Rowan's. A strange calm, settling over her cold and resolute. She would play the game. She would uncover the truth, whatever it took. Even if it meant aligning herself with the devil she knew. Well then, she said, a humorless smile curving her lips. Let's not keep our loving family waiting. With that, she stepped past Rowan and Vincent, her heels sinking into the plush Obusan carpet as she strode towards the hallway. Towards the vipers awaiting her in the drawing room, fangs bared and poised to strike towards the unraveling of Henrietta Ray's final, deadly, charade. The drawing room was a study in faded opulence, all peeling gilt and dusty velvet. A fire crackled in the massive marble hearth, casting writhing shadows on the walls. Shadows that seemed to reach for Samantha as she crossed the threshold, their grasping fingers cold on the nape of her neck. Well, well, well. The prodigal daughter returns. Charles Worthington lounged in a high-backed armchair, one leg crossed over the other, a snifter of brandy dangling from his manicured fingers. He looked like an aging matinee idol gone to seed, his once dashing features blurred by years of hard living and harder drinking. His pale eyes raked over Samantha, a smirk playing at the corners of his mouth. Hello, Charles. Samantha kept her voice carefully neutral, even as her skin crawled beneath his assessing gaze. I see time has been kind to you. Kinder than it's been to you, my dear, a honeyed voice interjected. Delilah Worthington glided into view on a waft of Chanel and Nallis, her willowy frame draped in a black sheath dress that likely cost more than most people made in a month. Her flaxen hair was pulled back in a sleek chignon, exposing the swan-like curve of her neck. She looked like a debutante who had stepped straight out of the pages of town and country. Or the gates of hell itself, Samantha mused darkly. Delilah, she greeted, her smile thin as a razor's edge. I hardly recognized you without a knife protruding from my back. The blonde's laugh was like shattered glass, bright and brittle. Oh, Samantha, you always were one for dramatics. It's no wonder you fled to the city to pursue that silly little art career of yours. Samantha's fingers twitched with the urge to wrap around Delilah's slender throat, to squeeze until that mocking laugh was nothing more than a strangled gasp. But she reined in the impulse, schooling her features into an expression of cool disdain. As much as I'm enjoying this little family reunion, she said, perhaps we should get on with the matter at hand? I believe we have a will to settle. Vincent cleared his throat, looking distinctly uncomfortable as he stepped forward, a thick folder clutched to his chest. Yes, well, if everyone would please take a seat, we can begin. Samantha crossed to one of the low sofas, sinking into the musty damask. Rowan took the seat beside her, his thigh brushing hers in a way that was entirely too deliberate to be accidental. She stiffened but didn't pull away, all too aware of Charles and Delilah's sharp gazes, tracking their every move. Vincent settled into an armchair, the folder balanced on his knees. He opened it with a soft rustle of paper, his fingers trembling slightly as he withdrew a sheaf of documents. I, Henrietta Ravenswood Ray, being of sound mind and body. As Vincent droned on, detailing the various bequests and stipulations of her mother's last will and testament, Samantha let her gaze wander around the room. It settled on the massive oil painting hanging above the mantelpiece, a portrait of Henrietta in her prime, all alabaster skin and raven hair, her green eyes glittering with cold cunning. Even in death, her mother loomed larger than life, a malevolent specter presiding over the proceedings. 
A sudden, sharp inhalation from Vincent snapped Samantha's attention back to the present. The lawyer was staring down at the papers in his hands, his face gone slack with shock. What is it? Charles demanded, leaning forward in his chair. Out with it, man. It's, it's the estate, Vincent stammered. Ravenswood Manor. Henrietta has left it. He swallowed convulsively, Adam's apple bobbing in his throat. To all four of you, jointly, with the stipulation that you must reside here together for a period of no less than six months, or else forfeit your claim to the entirety of the inheritance. Stunned silence descended on the room, thick and smothering as a funeral shroud. Samantha's heart pounded against her ribcage, a trapped bird desperate for flight. Six months. Trapped in this mausoleum with the three people she despised most in the world. It was a nightmare made flesh. Beside her, Rowan made a low sound in the back of his throat, somewhere between a laugh and a growl. Well played, mother, he murmured, so softly she almost didn't hear. Well played indeed. Charles surged to his feet, his brandy snifter shattering on the hearth. This is preposterous, he snarled. Henrietta can't possibly expect us to live under the same roof, like some sort of macabre Brady bunch. I assure you, she can and she does, Vincent said, a note of steel entering his voice. The terms of the will are quite clear. Cooperate or lose everything. Delilah let out a tinkling laugh, her eyes glinting with malicious glee. Oh, I think it sounds delightful. Just one big happy family, under Mother Dearest's watchful eye. Her gaze cut to Samantha, sharp as a scalpel. Don't you agree, dear sister? Samantha swallowed past the bitter taste in her mouth, her fingers curling into the sofa cushion. Six months. She could endure six months, if it meant claiming her rightful inheritance. If it meant unraveling the secrets Rowan had alluded to, the bitter poison lurking beneath Ravenswood's genteel facade. I agree she said, her voice steady, even as her pulse raced. We'll play mother's game. We'll do what needs to be done. Rowan's hand found hers in the space between their thighs, his fingers lacing with hers in a grip just shy of painful. A reminder. A warning. We're in this together, that grip said. <sighs> Before, better, or worse. Went on. Samantha met his gaze, saw the banked heat smoldering in those fathomless black eyes. The promise of secrets, shared, and sins forgiven. The specter of their shared past, rising from the depths like a drowned thing hungry for the light. Why, for better or worse, she agreed silently. Until death do us part. When? Vincent cleared his throat, the sound unnaturally loud in the charged silence. Well then, if there are no further objections, he trailed off, quailing beneath the weight of four pairs of eyes, each filled with their own measure of resentment, calculation, and barely leashed violence. Welcome home, he finished weakly, and may God have mercy on us all. Yeah. As the clock in the foyer chimed midnight, Samantha stood at the window of her childhood bedroom, staring out over the moonlit grounds of Ravenswood Manor. The sprawling lawns and manicured hedgerows looked eerie in the silvery light, like a scene from a gothic horror novel. Which wasn't far from the truth, she mused grimly. Henrietta's will had seen to that. A knock at the door startled her from her dark thoughts. She crossed the room on bare feet, the hardwood cold against her soles, and turned the brass knob with a sense of leaden inevitability. Rowan stood on the other side, still dressed in his funeral finery, his white shirt open at the collar. A bottle of Macallan dangled from his long fingers, the amber liquid sloshing gently against the glass. I thought you might need a drink, he said by way of greeting. God knows I do. Samantha stepped back to let him enter, acutely aware of the way his gaze swept over her, taking in the thin silk of her nightgown, the tumble of her hair over her shoulders. She felt exposed, raw, like a nerve stripped of its protective sheath. Drink, screw, or talk. Rowan said, crossing to the dresser and setting down the bottle with a decisive thunk. Which will it be? Samantha let a brittle laugh escape her lips. You don't mince words, do you? 
I think we're a bit past pleasantries at this point, don't you? He poured a generous measure of whiskey into a cut crystal tumbler and held it out to her. Drink. You're going to need it for what I'm about to tell you. She took the glass, the brush of his fingers against hers sending a jolt of electricity up her arm. She took a bracing swallow, the liquor burning a fiery path down her throat. Talk, then, she said, sinking onto the edge of the bed. Tell me these earth-shattering secrets you've been lording over me since I arrived. Rowan settled beside her, close enough that she could feel the heat radiating off his body. He took a pull straight from the bottle, his throat working as he swallowed. Your mother didn't die of natural causes, he said without preamble. She was murdered. The words hit Samantha like a punch to the gut, forcing the air from her lungs in a ragged gasp. Murdered. The world tilted on its axis, a sickening lurch that threatened to spill her to the floor. How do you know? She managed, her fingers white-knuckled around the glass. Rowan's smile was a blade in the darkness. Because I'm the one who found her body. And I'm the one who's been covering up the evidence ever since. Samantha stared at Rowan, her mind reeling. Murdered. The word echoed in her skull, a macabre drumbeat that drowned out all other thought. Her mother, the indomitable Henrietta Ray, snuffed out like a candle in the wind. And Rowan, the man she had once loved with every fiber of her being, the keeper of that grim secret. Why? She whispered, her voice cracking on the single syllable. Why would you cover it up? Why not call the police? Report it like any sane person would? Rowan's laugh was a jagged thing, sharp enough to cut. And have this whole sordid affair dragged through the tabloids? Have every last one of the Ravenswood skeletons hauled out of the closet for public consumption? No, Samantha. I did what needed to be done to protect this family. To protect you. She flinched away from the ferocity in his voice, the unspoken implication hanging in the air between them. You think I had something to do with it? It wasn't a question. Rowan's jaw clenched, a muscle ticking beneath the skin. I think a lot of people had motive to want Henrietta dead. Including you. Including me. Hell, including Charles and Delilah and half the damn staff. Samantha surged to her feet, the crystal tumbler slipping from her numb fingers to shatter on the hardwood. Well, I didn't do it, she spat, rounding on him. I may have hated her, but I'm not a murderer. Aren't you? He rose to meet her, his eyes blazing in the dim light. How many times did you wish her dead, Samantha? How many times did you fantasize about wrapping your hands around that slender, pale throat and squeezing until the life left her eyes? She recoiled as if slapped, bile rising in her throat. Stop it. Naspe. But Rowan advanced on her, relentless, his voice dropping to a low, savage purr. How many times did you dream of poisoning her tea, of pushing her down the stairs, of smothering her with one of her own damask pillows? Because I know I did. More times than I can count. Samantha's back hit the wall, the plaster cold against her bare shoulders. Rowan loomed over her, caging her in with his arms, his body a line of searing heat against her own. The only difference between you and me, darling, he breathed, his lips a hair's breadth from hers, is that I had the balls to act on it. Shock jagged through her, an icy dagger piercing to her marrow. What? Rowan's smile was cruel, taunting. Come now, Samantha. You really think I was coddling our dear mother out of the goodness of my heart, did you? She was a viper. A poison that needed to be leached from this family before she destroyed us all. Samantha shook her head, panic clawing at her throat. You're lying. You're trying to trick me, to manipulate me like you always do. He slammed his palms against the wall on either side of her head, making her gasp. I'm trying to save you, he snarled. From the police. From this family. From yourself. He leaned in, his breath hot against her ear. Because when they find out what really happened to Henrietta... And make no mistake, Samantha, they will find out you're going to need an alibi. An alibi, she echoed, her voice sounding distant, muffled, as if it belonged to someone else. And I suppose you're offering to be that alibi. Who else? 
Rowan drew back, his eyes glittering with the emotion she couldn't name. Triumph, perhaps? Or something darker, more primal. We're inextricably bound, you and I, have been since the moment you first let me under your skin, into your bed, into your heart. Samantha's pulse pounded in her ears, a deafening roar that threatened to sweep her under. He was right. As much as she hated to admit it, Rowan was right. If the police came knocking, if the sordid truth of Henrietta's death came to light, she would need him. Need his cunning, his ruthlessness, his ironclad control. Even if it damned her very soul in the process. What do you want? She asked, hating the tremor in her voice. The weakness it betrayed. In exchange for your protection. Rowan's smile was slow, predatory. He traced a finger along the delicate line of her clavicle, his touch searing her skin like a brand. I want what I've always wanted, Samantha. You. Mind, body, and soul. Bound to me, now and forever. She shivered, goose flesh rippling in the wake of his touch. It was madness. Sheer, unadulterated madness to even consider his offer. But what choice did she have? If Rowan was telling the truth, if her mother had been murdered, she was a suspect. A prime one, with means and motive aplenty. And without an alibi, without someone to vouch for her whereabouts, her innocence. She would hang. As surely as the sun rose in the east and set in the west, she would hang for a crime she didn't commit. Unless she made a deal with the devil himself. Samantha closed her eyes, her throat working as she swallowed past the bitter tang of defeat. All right, she whispered. The word ashes on her tongue. All right. I'll do it. I'll be yours. Now and forever. Rowan's smile was a slash of white in the darkness, his eyes glinting with feral satisfaction. I knew you'd see reason. He purred, his hand sliding up to cup her throat, his thumb pressing lightly against her hammering pulse. After all, we both know the truth, don't we? You've always been mine, from the very beginning. And then his mouth was on hers, hot and demanding, his tongue sweeping past her parted lips to claim her in a bruising kiss. Samantha moaned, her hands fisting in the fabric of his shirt, torn between the urge to shove him away and drag him closer. He tasted of whiskey and dark promises, of forbidden fruit and original sin. She was drowning in him, in the heat of his body, the skilled slide of his tongue against hers, the press of his fingers on her hip, her waist, the swell of her breast. This was wrong. Twisted. A consummation born of blackmail and desperation. But God help her, she wanted it. Wanted him, with a ferocity that bordered on madness had wanted him from the moment she first saw him all those years ago, a dark prince come to whisk her away from her gilded cage. Rowan broke the kiss, his breathing ragged, his eyes black with lust in the guttering candlelight. Say it, he demanded, his voice rough as gravel. Say you're mine. Samantha swallowed, her heart a wild thing battering itself against the cage of her ribs. I'm yours, she breathed, damning herself with every word. Now and forever. A low, feral sound rumbled in Rowan's chest, his grip tightening on her waist. He bent his head, his lips brushing the shell of her ear as he whispered, Then let the games begin, my love. A shiver chased down Samantha's spine, a bone-deep premonition of darkness to come. She had made her bargain, struck her devil's deal. Now, all that remained was to play out the hand she'd been dealt and pray she survived the final reckoning. But enough. Morning dawned bleak and chill, a sullen gray light filtering through the heavy drapes of the bedroom. Samantha stirred, wincing at the dull ache in her muscles, the raw scrape of beard burn on her throat, her breasts, the tender skin of her inner thighs. Rowan was gone, the sheets beside her cold. No surprise there. He never did like to linger in the aftermath, preferring to slip away like a wraith before the first blush of dawn. She sat up, the bedclothes pooling around her waist, and buried her face in her hands. Shame washed over her in a sickening wave, mingling with a bone-deep feeling of dread. What had she done? What unholy alliance had she forged in the dark watches of the night? 
A sudden, sharp knock at the door jolted her from her spiraling thoughts. She scrambled from the bed, snatching up her discarded nightgown and yanking it over her head. Yes? She called, grimacing at the hoarse rasp of her voice. The door swung open, revealing a pale and shaken Vincent. The lawyer's eyes were wide, his lips trembling as he said, You need to come downstairs. Immediately. Samantha's heart plummeted to her toes, panic clawing at her throat. What is it? What's happened? Vincent shook his head, looking for all the world like a man who had just seen a ghost. It's Charles, he managed, his voice cracking. He's dead. Murdered, just like your mother. Samantha's world narrowed to a single, horrifying pinpoint. Charles, dead. Murdered in the night while she lay tangled in the sheets with Rowan, their bodies slick with sweat and sin. The bitter irony was like ashes on her tongue. She dressed in a daze, yanking on yesterday's black sheath, her fingers fumbling with the zipper. Her mind raced, fragments of memory surfacing like jagged shards of glass. Rowan's hot mouth on her skin, his hands shaping her hips, her breasts. The low, guttural sounds he made as he drove into her, claiming her, possessing her. Had he killed Charles while she slept? Slipped from her bed and stolen into the night? A blade in his hand and murder in his heart? The thought made her gorge rise, bile burning the back of her throat. She stumbled from the room, Vincent close on her heels, his breathing harsh and labored. The house was eerily silent, the air heavy with a sense of dread. It pressed down on Samantha like a physical weight, making each step an effort of will. They found Charles in the library, slumped over the massive oak desk, a snifter of brandy shattered at his elbow. His eyes stared sightlessly at the ceiling, his mouth frozen in a rictus of surprise. A dark, glistening pool of blood spread beneath his chair, stark against the Persian rug. Oh, God. Samantha clamped a hand over her mouth, fighting the urge to retch. Oh, God, oh, God. Flies in the web, a cold voice said from the shadows. Trapped in mother's twisted little game. Delilah stepped into the light, her blonde hair loose around her shoulders, her face pale and drawn. She looked like a wraith, a specter of the girl Samantha had once known. He's dead, she said, her voice flat, devoid of inflection. Just like mother. Just like we all will be, before this is over. Samantha shook her head, denial rising in her throat. No. No, this can't be happening. It's not possible. Delilah laughed. A brittle, jagged sound. Oh, but it is. Don't you see? This is what she wanted. What she planned, right from the very beginning. Vincent made a choked sound, his hands fluttering helplessly at his sides. The police, he said, his voice thin with panic. We have to call the police. And tell them what? Delilah demanded, rounding on him. That our dear departed mother has arranged one last murderous hurrah from beyond the grave. That we're being picked off one by one, like lambs to the slaughter? She shook her head, a brittle smile curving her lips. No, Tanu. We handle this ourselves. We find out who's behind this, and we make them pay. Rowan, not die. The name fell from Samantha's lips before she could stop it. A horrified whisper. It has to be Rowan. Delilah's eyes flashed, a brief flicker of something that might have been fear, quickly masked. Rowan? She echoed, her voice carefully neutral. What makes you say that? Samantha swallowed, her heart pounding against her ribs. He was with me last night, she said. The words bitter on her tongue? In my bed. But when I woke up. He was gone, Delilah finished, her smile sharp as a blade. How very convenient. A built-in alibi, courtesy of his loving sister. Samantha flinched, shame and anger warring in her breast. I'm not his alibi, she snapped, the words tumbling out in a heated rush. I didn't know. I swear to God I didn't know. But you suspected, a cool voice interrupted. Didn't you, Samantha? Rowan stood in the doorway, still wearing last night's clothes, his hair disheveled, 
his eyes bloodshot. He looked like a man who had stared into the abyss and found it staring back. You suspected, he repeated, his gaze locked on hers, and yet you still let me into your bed. Into your body. Knowing what I was capable of. Samantha's mouth went dry, her skin prickling with a sudden, instinctive dread. Rowan, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Tell me you didn't do this. Tell me this wasn't you. He smiled, a cruel, mocking thing that made her blood run cold. Oh, my love, he purred, stepping into the room, his movements fluid and predatory. I wish I could. But we both know that would be a lie. Vincent made a strangled sound, stumbling back against the bookshelf. Dear God, he whimpered, crossing himself with a trembling hand. Dear God in heaven. God has nothing to do with this, Rowan said, his eyes never leaving Samantha's face. This is about family. About loyalty. About the ties that bind, thicker than blood. He crossed to the desk, trailing his fingers through the pool of Charles's blood, painting them red. Poor stupid Charles, he mused, his voice almost fond. He never did know when to keep his mouth shut, when to stop asking questions. Samantha's heart seized, realization crashing over her like a wave of icy water. He knew, she breathed, horror dawning. He knew about mother, about what you did. Rowan inclined his head, a mocking little bow. Give the lady a prize he drawled, flicking his bloody fingers in an indolent gesture. Yes, Samantha. He knew. Just like you know. Just like we all know. He turned to Delilah, his smile widening. Isn't that right, sister mine? Delilah lifted her chin, her eyes hard as flint. I don't know what you're talking about, she said, her voice steady. But Samantha saw the way her hands trembled, the way her throat worked as she swallowed. I had nothing to do with this. With any of it. Liar! The word burst from Samantha's lips, hot and accusing. You're in this up to your pretty neck, Delilah. You and Rowan both. She whirled on him, her heart pounding, her blood singing with a strange, reckless fury. What was the plan? She demanded, her voice rising, echoing off the shadowed walls. Seduce me. Make me your alibi, while you and Delilah murdered our way through the family, leaving you the sole heirs to the Ravenswood fortune? Rowan's smile was a slash of white in the gloom, his eyes glittering with malice. Something like that, he purred, stalking towards her. But you know what they say about the best laid plans. Samantha stood her ground, refusing to give an inch, even as he loomed over her, his body thrumming with a dark, deadly energy. And what's that? She asked, her voice steady despite the fear knotting her gut. He leaned in, his breath hot against her ear, his lips brushing her skin in a perverse mockery of a lover's caress. They often go awry, he whispered, his voice thick with dark promise. Especially when hearts are involved. And then, quick as a snake, his hand was around her throat, squeezing, cutting off her air. Samantha choked, scrabbling at his wrist, her nails gouging bloody furrows in his flesh. But his grip was implacable, iron hard as he forced her back, back, until her spine slammed into the unforgiving edge of the desk. Dimly, she heard Vincent shout, heard Delilah's high, thin scream. But it was all distant, muffled, drowned out by the roaring of blood in her ears, the thrum of her own pulse as it beat a desperate tattoo against Rowan's strangling fingers. We could have had everything, he snarled, his eyes wild, feverish. Spittle flecked his lips, his face contorted in a mask of rage and thwarted desire. Everything, Samantha. You and me, king and queen of the ash heap. Black spots swam before Samantha's eyes, her lungs burning, screaming for air. She clawed at his face, raking her nails down his cheek, drawing blood. But he barely seemed to feel it, his grip tightening, relentless, inexorable. Now look what you've made me do, he said, his voice thick with mock regret. Look what you've made me. The crack of the gunshot was deafening, reverberating through the room like a thunderclap. Rowan stiffened, his eyes going wide, 
shocked. His grip on Samantha's throat slackened, fell away as he stumbled back, clutching at his chest. Blood blossomed between his fingers, shockingly red against the white of his shirt. He looked down at it, then up at Samantha, his face slack with surprise. Samantha, he whispered, his voice thick, wet. My love. Then he crumpled, folding in on himself like a marionette with its strings cut. He hit the ground with a dull, heavy thud, blood pooling beneath his body, spreading in a dark, glistening tide. For a moment, there was only silence, broken by the harsh rasp of Samantha's breathing, the thunderous pound of her heart. Then Delilah laughed, high and thin and utterly mad. Bang, she said, lowering the smoking pistol, her smile wide and feral. Looks like you're not the only one with deadly aim, brother mine. Samantha stared at her, shock and horror warring with a sudden savage surge of triumph. Rowan was dead. The man who had haunted her dreams, tormented her waking hours, was nothing more than cooling meat on the library floor. And Delilah, Delilah had killed him. Her sister, her blood, had put a bullet in his black heart and sent him straight to hell. Why? She asked, her voice raw, scraped bloody. Why did you? Delilah shrugged, a graceful, indolent ripple of her shoulders. He was going to kill you, she said simply. And I couldn't let that happen. Not before I had a chance to do this. She raised the pistol again, aiming it square at Samantha's chest. Her smile was beatific, almost tender. I'm sorry, sister, she said, cocking the hammer with a soft, deadly click. But there can only be one queen on this particular chessboard. Samantha's heart stopped, then kicked into overdrive, adrenaline surging through her veins in a sickening flood. This couldn't be happening. It couldn't end like this, not after everything she'd endured, everything she'd survived. She looked at Vincent, still cowering against the bookshelf, his face chalky with terror. At Delilah, haloed in the watery light spilling through the mullioned windows, as beautiful and deadly as an avenging angel. At Rowan's body, sprawled in a spreading pool of blood, his sightless eyes staring up at the coffered ceiling. And then, in that infinite, elastic moment between one heartbeat and the next, Samantha saw it. Her chance. Her one, slim hope for salvation. The pistol trembled in Delilah's grip, her finger tense on the trigger. Samantha could see the madness in her eyes, the zealous light of a true believer, convinced of her own righteous cause. She knew, with a bone-deep certainty, that her sister would pull that trigger, would put a bullet in her heart and watch her bleed out on the Obusan carpet, smiling all the while. Unless Samantha stopped her, time seemed to slow, the world narrowing to a single crystalline point. Samantha lunged, low and fast, a desperate animal motion. She crashed into Delilah, grappling for the gun, fingers clawing, teeth bared in a feral snarl. The pistol barked, the shot going wild, shattering a vase on the mantle in a spray of porcelain shards. Delilah screamed, high and ragged, as Samantha bore her to the ground, straddling her chest, fighting for control of the weapon. They rolled, a tangle of limbs and flying hair, fingers grasping, tearing, seeking purchase. Samantha felt the hot sting of Delilah's nails raking down her cheek, tasted blood as her sister's elbow caught her in the mouth. But she clung on, gripping the gun with desperate strength, her heart pounding fit to burst. And then, with a final, wrenching twist, she had it. The pistol, heavy in her hand, the barrel pressed to the soft hollow of Delilah's throat. Her sister went still beneath her, chest heaving, eyes wide and glassy with shock. Samantha she whispered, her voice thin, pleading. Sister, please. Samantha's finger trembled on the trigger, the metal warmed by their struggling bodies. It would be so easy. So goddamn easy to end it here and now. To put a bullet in Delilah's treacherous heart and watch the life drain from her eyes, just as she had with Rowan. But looking down into her sister's face, twisted with fear and desperation, Samantha felt something in her break, some last, fragile tether to the person she had once been, the girl who had loved with reckless abandon,
who had believed in happy endings and the triumph of good over evil. That girl was gone now, shattered on the altar of her family's twisted legacy. In her place was someone harder, colder. A survivor, forged in the crucible of betrayal and heartbreak. I, a woman who knew that sometimes, mercy was the cruelest cut of all. Slowly, inexorably, Samantha eased her finger off the trigger. She stood, the pistol dangling from her hand, and looked down at Delilah with eyes that felt ancient, fathomless. Get out, she said, her voice flat, leached of all emotion. Get out of this house and never come back. Or I swear to God I'll kill you myself. Delilah stared up at her, tears streaking her porcelain cheeks. For a moment, she looked like the little girl Samantha remembered, the one who had crawled into her bed during thunderstorms, seeking comfort from the big sister who could vanquish all monsters. But that little girl was gone now, as surely as the one Samantha had been. In her place was a stranger, a twisted reflection of the sibling she had once loved. Slowly, painfully, Delilah got to her feet. She swayed, one hand pressed to her bruised throat, her eyes never leaving Samantha's face. This isn't over, she rasped, her voice thick with pain and venomous promise. You can't escape what you are, Samantha. What we are. Ravenswood will always be a part of you no matter how far you run. Samantha smiled, a bleak, empty thing. We'll see, she said softly. Now go, before I change my mind. Delilah held her gaze a moment longer, something dark and fathomless swirling in the depths of her eyes. Then with a last, hate-filled glance at Rowan's cooling body, she turned and limped from the room. And then, silence, deafening, all-consuming silence, broken only by the ragged draw of Samantha's breath, and the distant, mournful cry of a crow winging its way across the gray expanse of the sky. Slowly, feeling a hundred years old, Samantha sank to her knees beside Rowan. With a shaking hand, she reached out and closed his staring eyes, her fingers lingering on the cold, waxen skin of his cheek. Good by, my love, she whispered, tears slipping down her cheeks to mingle with his blood on the carpet. May you find the peace in death that eluded you in life. Then she rose, the pistol a leaden weight in her hand, and turned to face Vincent. The lawyer was still pressed against the bookshelf, his face a mask of shock and horror. Call the police, Samantha said, her voice hollow, distant. Tell them, tell them there's been a murder two murders. She swallowed, her throat aching, raw. And then call my lawyer. I have a feeling I'm going to need one. Vincent nodded jerkily, fumbling for his phone with nerveless fingers. Samantha watched him for a moment, feeling strangely detached, as if she were observing the scene from outside her own body. The end.